uh, welcome again, everybody, uh, to our uh, AK Let's Get Practical event. Uh, all right. We're put on by the uh, City of Spencer ADA Council, advisory group to the City of Spencer Council. Um, I will make sure I get this in right now before I forget. We want to thank the generous support of the Lake County Community Foundation and the City of Spencer for the Renaissance Initiative Grant. They helped to fund uh, not only this week's event, but also the whole week that Michelle is going to be here. Well, it seems like she's going to be here whole week. Well, I'm not leaving until Friday. I know. <laughs> and now I've made another appointment with somebody else. Right. Said, we keep adding on Thursday. Uh, so anyway, again, thank you everybody for coming. And uh, we hope you had a chance to uh, try the disability. If you didn't, um, our ADA Council makes that opportunity available to uh, schools, businesses, uh, service groups, uh, anytime you'd like to do that, just call Janae at City Hall and she can line that up for you. Can everybody hear Tom okay? Yeah. Okay, okay, that's maybe we'll talk a little louder. I will not There you go. Housekeeping. Um, if you haven't found the restrooms yet, they're over this way. So if you need to, uh, get out and take care of that stuff. Um, you will not, not offend Michelle or anybody if you need to go back and get some more coffee or lemonade or cookies, whatever. Um, Speak for yourself. <laughs> if you do that, you got to bring me something. <laughs> and, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this in the, into, and I think we have something to add to Michelle. Which, uh, um, this, this visit by Michelle to Spencer, she, Michelle has told us, and, and we agree, this is all about Spencer and Clay County and, and, the, and the region. Uh, this is not about Michelle Bowman. This is about how Spencer can become more welcoming and more accessible. So if Michelle does something tonight, and she says something tonight, and it doesn't make sense to you, please stop her and, and ask her to go further because she doesn't want you walking out of this room tonight saying, why did she say that? That makes no sense. And uh, so yes, and I think her, her other, she has lots of catchphrases, but one of them is, we have to agree to disagree. Oh yeah. Oh, this is too loud. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So anyway, uh, please, yeah, don't be afraid to ask any questions. Michelle does not want this just to be la 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 Michelle all night. She, she wants some, some feedback, so please, please jump in. Many? Um, at, the end of, at the end of the night, I'll give you a couple reminders. Uh, there are a couple sheets in your folder that, uh, I think one's a, a green and one a yellow, is that right? I think. Uh, they're order forms. Uh, one of them is uh, SMU is taping tonight, and so if you want to catch something you might have missed or something, uh, SMU will have that DVD available for $10. You can get that from them. Uh, also, Michelle, when she gets done this week, she'll still be working with us on a training video so that if people couldn't make it here tonight, we'll have a resource that we can give them to say, if you'd like to make your business more accessible, well, here are some concrete examples of how to do that. And that, that DVD will also be available to message you when you have it ready, also for $10. So if you're interested in that, we, we just have you fill that, give us your name and contact information, just leave it on your table and pick it up. Also, we're trying to be environmentally friendly here tonight. So instead of having giving you a whole packet worth of 50 sheets of paper, uh, we have an event website which has a resources page on it. And, it, and all those resources are so resources from Michelle, resources that we've found about accessibility. So if you're welcome to, and it's all free, so um, you can get, let, give, us, again, give us your name and contact information, and we'll send you that link to the website, and there will be all the resources that you'll need. We'll talk about tonight. So. All right. Now that everybody can hear me, uh, may I please introduce the wild, wacky woman of Wheelchair Lane? Well, uh, thank you. Please bring us down now because um, Lois is going to sit down here. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to do it. Okay. I'm awfully loud. I'm ready to loud. You know, I, I'm sitting here and I can rattle some health faces over. I make parents jealous because I can outtalk them. So, but if you do worry about something I've said, just raise your hand. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do to you all, what? 
I, I know. I just give me a second. Please give me a second. I'm going to have fun with you all. Since I'm not up there, now, they made a wonderful attempt to put a ramp here. The problem is, going up is not so bad. But when I'm coming down, I'm blindsided down here. And I could actually go off the ramp. So I'm not using it because it's not long enough. But they get triple A rating for trying. The rest of it is just a lack of the knowledge of knowing the right thing to do. Now, because I'm up here, or I'm here instead of up there, I'm not going to let you off the hook. <laughs> I can see you all regardless. I just keep raising up and rising up. I'm levitating. My push magic hat on the mic. We're going to have another magic hat later on, and she's going to help me with her, isn't she? How high? If I stop, I stop. Okay. Now I go a lot slower, and it slows me down. But do have fun. I'm going to do some irreverent things. That's just the way that I am. And this is so hard for me. You're so scarlet. Oh, I can't see you all. Can you see this now because I've risen up? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, their whole week is called the APA Let's Get Practical. But for tonight, I thought, no, 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 no. We're talking more business tonight. So I added the ADA in business, let's get practical. And I do want to make something really clear. We've been handing out my business cards. Has everybody got a business card from me? If you don't and you need one, let us know and I'll have Ann or somebody just start passing it to any hands that are up. Because, and I'm serious about this, either email me or call me. What did I do? Oh, but there should be more than those. Okay, there should be a whole box someplace, somehow. But anyway, if you do email me, though, and I have an answer, with at least within 48 hours, you check it out and send another one. I've had emails get all messed up. I have them sometimes go with me. Never remember my answer. Sometimes I get it a week later, and sometimes I won't. So I want to be sure that you know I'm not ignoring you. But do me, the secret for you all is in the title line, Put Spencer first. Just the word Spencer will say, ah, this comes from somebody in Spencer. And that's going to get a priority over a lot of the other things. There might be some dumb stuff. But if I see that word Spencer, I'll make sure to say it. Okay? So be sure that you do that kind of thing because I am here to help, especially businesses. I eat, sleep, and drink this. I've been doing this since 1990, and I've been doing it even before then. Okay, because I'm a certified personnel consultant, and I was placed to people with disabilities. And so, as a result, I was always helping the businesses become accessible. Now, I got off track a little bit because I actually have a presentation to give you. But there's obviously the first part of it's up there. You know the guy in the middle, don't you? I'm hiding you, Molly. Are you sure I'm on yeah. your way? No, you're fine. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, this core group blows me out of the water. I have never seen, you know, I think slavery came back in and it came back in and, and, and Spencer. This core group has been like slaves to me. That's a terrible thing to say. They have done so much for me. I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. And I can say, no, you should be doing Oh, we want to do it. Uh oh, uh oh, I did it again. Wait a minute. I need your time for somebody. Yes. I dropped the video. Um, can you find it? Because I don't want to tear it up. Okay. I think, well, I did clip it, but I'm getting here. I'm doing something that's the wrong direction. Is it? It's this thing here. Let's try this again. I thought I had it, but it wouldn't fall off. By the way, you know, they always say nobody's perfect. I can correct that. I am perfect. I am a perfect mess. If anybody, can make something go crazy or something go wrong, ta -da, you can look at her. So, just be used to that fact. More crazy things are probably going to happen. Do you notice that everything's attached to me? This is attached. My phone's attached. My key fob is attached. My, my, um, my pens are attached because I drop everything. And she gets, it's like, come on, don't do it again. And then you'll see her do some work after a while. 
but it's just the fact that I can always mess things up. But anyway, these fabulous people, now there is the whole ADA Council, and I'll show you that in a moment, but these wonderful people have worked their tails off to make all this happen. And they have been treating me like a queen of England or something. I mean, I swear, there could not be any president, ruler, or queen that could come and be treated better than I could treat them. So now I feel like I'm not queen for a day, like they used to have that program. I've been queen for a week, and I love it. I don't want to go back home. Now this is the rest of the ADA Council, and you'll notice my quote. I would tell people all the time, especially when they would be looking at me, and, and you'd see people looking at me and say, oh, but for the grace of God, and you could just see the look in their face. Okay, I'm going to have to come back here or something, because I can't keep twisting my neck. This is driving me crazy here. I cannot stand to have my neck <coughs> moving slowly. I can't stand to have people behind me. And if I twist my neck too much, I'll be in deep duty. Okay, that, that's enough. Maybe I can see you all back. If I can get anybody to come over this way a little bit more, I'd be most grateful. But anyhow, sympathy discouraged. You're feeling sorry for the person. You're, oh my God, how terrible. And you keep going. Empathy sees the need and does something about it. Okay? This chair. It does all kinds of things, and maybe after a while I'll show you some of the things it does wrong, but it really demonstrates the high school kids that I'm going to be talking to. But it goes flat out backwards, it does all kinds of things, because somebody realized the need. Now the only thing that's still driving me crazy is nobody has ever come up with the fact that when the chair stops, that you can start rocking. Because when you live in pain all the time, when you rock, it helps keep the pressure off of one spot, and but it gets the oxygen moving, and it keeps the muscles moving, you know, gently. And, and that's, I keep waiting for that invention before I die. I'm already 74, so only God knows how long he's going to put up with me on earth. But um, I wish somebody would invent that, because that's the need. But that's what it's all about. And they say that, you know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Well, empathy is the solution, you know, and the catalyst for invention. And so that's why I always say that, and I, I believe you, we try, we go through it. Now here again is, is uh, something that's important, is people forget that becoming accessible is going to increase, increase your return on investment, your ROI, and that's going to be practical on every slide that has those um, letters up there. Because if, what in, in the past, especially when the ADA first came out, all these businesses says, Oh, why do they need to be accessible? I never see any people with disabilities. And the joke was, I don't see them because they can't get in. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, oh what's so good? Give me a little more. Just lay down. It's okay. Just lay down. Oh. She says, we're supposed to be in bed, Mom. This is bedtime. I gave up and lay down. Okay, down. It's okay. You just lay down. I'm moving around like that too much. Be careful. Now, come over here and lay down. So, oh, thank you, sweetie. But now Lois is going to need this after a while, so I don't want you to, maybe we can bring it there a little bit. Just, is it too heavy to hurt your back? I'm, I'm pathetic. I, I live in enough pain 24 hours a day that I'm always worried about everybody else getting hurt. There we go. Okay, thank you. Stevie, like I said, see what I mean? I didn't even ask to have it done. What happens? They do it for me. But we forget. Once you're accessible, I can get in there. I'm going to tell you some stories later on, true stories. I'll let you see the pictures that relate to the stories. But if you get that return on investment, you invest a lot of money to get into your business. But did you think that was a waste? Or did you feel for the money I've invested, I'm going to get a return for that investment? Yeah, are you going to bother going in business? Well, that's some of the things I'm going to try to show you as we move forward. This is something I also want to show you. Disability doesn't discriminate. Look at the famous people that we have. Well, let's just go right now. John McKinney. Okay, he's got cancer of the brain. I can't think of the woman's name from Hawaii. I've got her on tomorrow's slide. She's got cancer. She's a senator from Hawaii. There's somebody. Oh, uh, uh, Casey? No, Casey. Who's the guy that got shot? 
I can't think of his name, but is he in the house? He's in the house of representatives. I mean, one day he's playing baseball, and this guy comes up and shoots him, and because of the bullet that he used, it's going to be a long time for that gentleman. It's, it's, I know the name, I can't think of his name. Scalise, thank you. It's going to be a long time before he walks properly. Because they, those bullets are made to penetrate and tear everything up. In the old days, if a bullet hit you, it's such a stop if it hit the bone or this or that. So, I mean, just think of those three just in the last few months. And I was training this one company one time, and I spent like three days training, and they had like 300 employees. So I said, okay, there's 300 of you. And this is terrible, but the trouble is, every time I say it, it's true. Police departments, wherever I train, I said, within a year, three of you are going to end up with a disability. It might be medical, it might be physical, but it's going to be a disability. That was on Wednesday and Thursday. No, it was Thursday and Friday. Friday night, one man has a heart attack. Friday night, another one goes into renal failure. Flat renal failure. Say that three times. Saturday, one has a car accident. One weekend, you don't think that's as scary to be a prophet in a weekend. And on Monday, I come in not knowing any of this. And the uh, <coughs> president of the company greets me and says, Michelle, I don't know if we're going to, we will not allow you to make any more prophecies. <laughs> and he's looking at me really serious. And I said, What are you talking about? And he starts telling me this. See, they don't was devastated. One cotton. In the weekend. And on my, my thing tomorrow, I'm saying to the high school students, but the senator said, you're only one diagnosis from a disability and a sickness. And I've always said, you're only one, and this is terrible, and I don't mean to be downing you all, but it's a fact. You're only one second from an accident. One second from an accident. In fact, Stevie, was did you and I? Was it you and I or Janae and I that were going out of the um, Dream Center? And this uh, three other ladies had come up just before us. And we're coming. Janae, was it you with me? And the middle lady had stepped off the curb and, and fallen. But I think she just sort of collapsed and sat on the side of us. But I mean, one second she's walking out, and she could have really been hurt. But that's how quick it happens. So for all of you that are in business, it can even happen to you. Don't think we're above it. And the more that you plan, the more that as you're doing things, you look at the accessibility side of it. You look at all the different things that you might be able to do better so people can come in and use your establishment. Now, these are just some stuff here. We can, you can look at it real quick. What I'm telling you is there's lots of people out there with disabilities. So let's re talk about that return on investment. Here's the single. You've made your play, and I'm going to show you some physical pictures later on. That I can't go in one place, but I can go in the other. Okay, and I'll tell you my story in Montreal. So as soon as you've made it accessible, you've already got me coming in there. Then, look at this, isn't this fun? This is a real picture. You've got more than one person coming in. You've got actually a family, a husband and wife coming in there. Isn't that hysterical though how you made that up? It was impotent. They had the need, came up with the contraption, and off they go. But if you're allowing me in, I have four children, I have five grandchildren. They have their friends. I can't tell you how often I've taken my grandchildren to lunch or this or that, and their friends have come. So before you know it, we're half a dozen people. And we go to the place, why are you in? So you don't just have me coming there to eat or to shop. You got the kids that I brought. So it is one of these things that multiplies. Maybe almost as fast as rapid sometimes. But that's just the thing to look at. It does increase your return on investment. Now, the diversity is endless. And so what you're looking at is all kinds of disabilities could be there. A lot of them say, I have more unseen disabilities than what you can see here. And what you can see here is I need a wheelchair because obviously walking doesn't work too well for me. But for years and years and years, the disability that has affected my walking, I was born with it. 
didn't know until I was in my 50s. I have a dozen different disabilities, and you don't see any of them. But when you've got your place and you've got your business, your sensitivity, your awareness that if somebody needs help or you see something happening, or maybe even somebody starts going through a little bit of a panic attack, pull back, be available, and say, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Gently, don't rush up, scare the living aspirations out of them. Oh, honey, I wonder if she's going to die. Okay, one of my gang. See, see, and, oh, Ann. Anne's the one that she adores. She stops obeying me when Anne's around. So we'll be sweetheart. You notice I didn't volunteer. You know, I've done it all. I have this fabulous. Damn it, I'm still connected somehow, some way. No, I don't know what I'm doing. Sarah, good luck. <laughs> I never know what I'm doing. I've got so many contractions on this chair. I have screwdrivers, pliers, wrenches on this chair. I have first aid kits. And I've got three bags with all kinds of information. Now, my magic trick was in it, but it's over there. I think we're doing magic trick before we end. But anyway, where's the seat? Everything's attached. When I use it, I find it because it's attached. There we go. Um, but be prepared for that. Okay, in fact, a lot of people, and, and I'll, sh no, I'll not show you, I'll show it later. Something that's really neat to have in your, your establishment, and it doesn't cost me $10. Look at that money. Look at that money. That's available out there if you're available for us. That's a lot of money. And, and look at that one shopping center with it. They just all get through. See that one picture with the woman by the counter? Is anything wrong with that? How do you feel about that? No comments. You're all asleep. I've put you to sleep already. Okay, where's the dog? I'm going to get her barking. She's going to come and nip at your heels. She's a hurting dog. I'm going to send her at your heels. Do you see anything wrong with that woman that's trying to get at the counter? No. Nothing at all. She can't see anybody. Look at her. She's down there, nobody can see her, and she can't see anybody. I'm going to show you a solution to that in a little bit. But this is really common. So I'll show you solutions later on. But all those other people can be there because it's accessible for them. Now, how do you treat a person with a disability? What does it say? Come on, I want to hear you say it. Like a person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still as honoring as me as ever, despite how bad my disabilities get. They keep getting worse. You know, I mean, every year, Thing else gets a little bit worse than last year. At 74, I'm thinking, okay, by 84, what's going to be going on? You know? But that's true. Treat us like a person. The disability does not take my personhood away. Just keep remembering that. In fact, I've had some, I've been to a couple of evangelical meetings where somebody brought me. And I don't mean it's wrong, I'm just telling you facts. This is what happened to me. And the, some of the people would say, oh, we're going to pray over you so you're healed. Or we want you to pray and agree with God so you're healed. And this one man really got mad. You're not sharing. I have told God, you do with me what you want. Now, I was, I was adopted. I was born and put into an orphanage at birth. In fact, I was at one of these places where the unplayed mother goes first, and then after that, the child goes into the orphanage. So I've been that until I was five years of age, and yet, I don't ever remember not having faith. I am so sorry, I don't want to at all. Just ignore it, I'm ignoring it. Um, but the point of it is, I just leave everything in God's hands. When I had my children, I said, you're in charge. And I got four fabulous children and five great, wonderful great children. But I've done that with my whole life. And so I said, Lord, well, if you want to heal me, great. But if you've got me here for a reason with this, Show me. I have helped more people. In fact, before that, I was in one crutch for years. I had a steel back brace on me that I had a hole on each pelvic bone and a hole on my tailbone this big, like a silver dollar. And I would use a pad this thick. And my daughter would put this on me every morning and, and take them on me. And by the time evening came and I come home, the fuss would be all the way through the bed. 
but it's the only way I can keep walking and I was a respiratory therapist. As that therapist, and because I understood pain, I did more with my patients. They would take treatments because I would work with them during the treatment and I would do all these other things. So one day, this one gentleman, oh, I loved him so much. And he was in so much pain, it was time for me to take his walk. His own shelf, I just can't do this. And he started crying, he was that kind of person. And on his chair is the identical steel brace, like I'm wearing. So I had my lab coat on, but I backed up to him. And I said, but I'm not gonna say Vince, because I can't remember his real name, but I have Uncle Vince that I love so much. I said, Vince, look at your back brace. And I said, take your hand, and go along my back. He's got the same brace. He said, you wear a back brace? I said, oh yeah, Vince, I've been wearing one for years. And I said, it's difficult and it's painful, but it keeps me going. He got up on his bed, he put that, but I helped him put the brace on. And he walked with me, and not anybody else could get him to walk. Now, is it because I'm wonderful? No, it had nothing to do with me. I'm the pain of the, you know what? In fact, you know how people are called the pain of the neck? I was born the pain of the neck. I didn't have to develop it. <laughs> but anyhow, it's those kinds of things. It's because I use a wheelchair that people trust me when I talk to them. Or I say there's hope, or we can do this and that. You know how it's the former drug addicts that can help the present drug addicts more than anybody else? And I feel this is what God is wanting me to do. So I'm not going to sit here and insist, okay, I want to get killed tonight, Barb. I've given that in his hands a long time ago and said, you do with me what you want. But when you get these people that are like that, I said, you will learn to kill them. God is so much smarter than the rest of us are. But this is why treat us like a person. The next one, of course, is real quick. How do you assist a person with a disability? Ask, Ask the, the person. person. And that's serious. I get people that want to open doors for me, and it's so precious. They rush and they open the door. And the way they do it is they're putting their life in their hands. You know, they'll get in front of the door and be holding it and their feet are sticking out here. And I gotta go through the, the door. What am I gonna do? But hit their feet. Or they reach and they're on the opposite side of the hinge, or they're behind the hinge and they're holding the door like this. Well, if it's not a self-closing door, that's not too bad. But if it's one of those heavy doors, they're going to break their shoulders. They're going to hurt their shoulders. And I just said, please wait a minute. Please do it this way, and then we're all going to go, okay. Now, some people will do it, and some people can't change my way of doing it. You know, that's embarrassing. But ask, and then ask how. Now, you've got to understand something. Whether you have a disability or you, you received one recently in your life, if you were a jackass before the disability, guess what? You're still a jackass. So just because one person gets mad at you for offering to help, doesn't mean you get mad at the rest of us. And I've had people say, well, I'm just not gonna help them. They, they get mad if you ask them to help. Huh, I can tell you people without disabilities, when you offered to help them, they got mad. It has nothing to do with it. Now, there are, <laughs> I gotta tell you this story, and I don't want to be getting away, but this gentleman, oh my God, you talk about a gift from God, he was, but he had a massive stroke, and it affected part of his brain, and the one side was pretty much paralyzed. But, and the bucket manager, this is what he would do. He would just say, shit, 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 shit. They'd be in church, and he'd be saying, shit, shit. Now, it's a small, small rural community, and I like all small rural communities. They all loved him. They all knew he was like, including the minister. And the minister would just go ahead and give his lecture, or whatever you want to call it, normally. And the man would be back there going, jet, jet, jet. and nobody, nobody was affected. Because they understood the personhood that was there. And they understood he did not, he was not that kind of person. It was the effect of a stroke. So things like that can happen where a person are with brain tumors. I still think that guy in Las Vegas, I wish they got, I don't know if they're doing an autopsy on him, but I honestly think that guy in Vegas that did that. But when, when his friend said, I think he may be here. If you would just sit with him here, or here, why don't you just sit here and lay down? Okay? Oh, what's the matter? Here, I give you a treat. Okay, sweetie. I said, well, you know what? She wouldn't eat me. 
pulling that away that I can't reach you because you don't want to be a the video. But uh, I think he's got brain tumor. I'm, I'm waiting to see if they will do an autopsy to see if that could have been what happened. Because she was talking about how he was screaming and this and that. And that could change your whole personality. But those, those kind of things can make a person change. But other than that, ask the person, get their advice, and find out what's best. Language makes a difference. I won't spend the whole, it's a disability to the person. A handicap is steps so I can't get up. A handicap is a door that's too narrow so I can't get through. A handicap can be added supra, supra, down. Jerry Trump. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been teasing her, we've been teasing back where she's not in trouble, and she knows it. This is a joke going on between us. I told her, I said, I think I could leave her with you and she'd be happy. <laughs> so anyhow, um, we, and attitude is the biggest handicap, especially when you're employing people. But then we are not strict. It seems to go about how many times have you heard a news announcer say the well, person's wheelchair bound or they're confined in a wheelchair. No, we're not. We get out of the wheelchair to sleep, we get out of the wheelchair to go to the bathroom, we get out of the wheelchair to get a bath, and there are people that really may be in that wheelchair most of the time. But that's not confinement in the sense of the word somebody's forced you there. But I love that picture of the wheelchair bound. Okay, so we, and I'm in the invalid, you know, being um, adopted to being illegitimate what people would call me, are invalid. And I said, look at that word, it's invalid. I am not invalid. So don't say invalid, I, you know, you've got to think of those things. Now, this is the other thing they have. People will come up to me and say, oh, you're so inspirational. You do this and you do that. And I'm looking at them and I'm saying, there is an inspirational bolt in my body. I'm nosy. I want to learn stuff. I want to do things. I want to have fun. That is inspirational. I'm just a regular person again. And I'm not going to the wheelchair stop me. But that's just because I'm so bullheaded that I won't let that happen. But that is not inspirational. Don't, don't pull that on us. We don't need it. Now, we're simply people. Saints and sinners. You know, all of these different things. And there's one, and I, I would wish I could put a snow shelter in front of my wheelchair. I would do this. I would do this. But my, I'm on a hill. My driveway is so steep I couldn't do that. That's from the movie Oz, or that television series called Oz. And the one person in the jail was a wheelchair user. But we have a lot of people with disabilities that end up in jail. The police department loves me when I train law enforcement. And I tell them if I come with my wheelchair after you, nail me. They love it to hear me say that. But we're criminals too. We're a little bit of everything. Now, we're just gonna go through this. What's, what's important about this is that I think so many of you know, the ADA came out and said, government entities must be accessible and do things. But also, private employers, private establishments must also be a certain amount of accessibility. So people forget that sometimes, but you have to understand if you're existing, and people forget this, if you're existing, you do the best that you can do. When you're building new, you ought to be doing it all right. And you hope that your architects know that. But they do require reasonable accommodations. And I'm going to give you some right now. It requires that regardless of what it is, if it's ready to achieve, achievable by a reasonable accommodation and there's not an undue burden. For example, they can't sit here and tell you that you change your whole place of what you're doing in order for them to be able to use it. Let's say it's a dance place where you have it a little bit darker and the ambiance is like that. They can't tell you to make all the lights bright for me because now they're ruining the flavor of what that's all about. Or they can't sit there and say, tear everything out over here because it's not accessible. No, the ADA doesn't require that if it's existing. Now, I might tell you, hey, you've got a section that you could make in a lower area. That wouldn't cost you a lot of money. Or I've got other solutions I'll show you in a little bit. By the way, up on the top right-hand corner, the, the person on the right is Eric. Where are you, Eric? There's Eric. And the person on the left, help me out. Craig, C-R-A-I-G. Okay. What does Craig do? He's retired now. He's retired. 
He had his own business. And we do that too, obviously. Okay. So, but here's some example. By the way, I used to have anybody heard that kiss method where it's keep it simple, stupid? I hate that. Why do you have to call someone stupid? Mine is keep it simple and straightforward. Okay, that's what's important. So we're going to show you some examples. Now, do you see that sign up there? I love that family restroom, except at, at City Hall, at, not because I was in the ADA specialist for the city of Kansas City, Missouri. One of the guys that, in fact, he was an assistant city architect, okay? And this young boy didn't want to go into that family restroom because it, now not this picture, yeah, I don't think that picture does it, but the picture he saw was a little girl. He says, I can't go in there, that's a little girl. So we changed our signs and decided now that it's a boy and a girl with the mother and the father, okay? But that's just showing you sensitivity and how children are. So, but look what's on there. It says family, and of course I've already got the line through because I hit the button too quick. Uh, restroom or something, what does it say under there? Isn't it restroom? They already know it's a restroom. It's a wasted word. In fact, even family wouldn't have to be there because the picture shows. Okay, the pictogram. But keeping family on there is fine. But sometimes we overword things. Now this next thing, look at this. Handicap for tables and stuff. First place, never use the word handicap. Remember, handicaps in the environment. Stairs are a handicap. Okay, narrow doors are a handicap. Curves, where there's no ramp, those are handicaps. Or when you're racing like vehicle, like horse, like horses, if the jockey has to be a certain weight, if the jockey is too light, they'll add weights to the horse. So then it's the correct thing. It's not a handicap. When you bowl, you get a handicap depending on your skill in bowling. Those are handicaps. The disability is in the person. But anyway, so that's sign. And all of those words, you don't need all those words. And I've got that already, sorry. Just that. And I can't tell you, if you go to McDonald's, a lot of places they have nothing but the wheelchair logo on the tables that are accessible. Amen. But if you insist on having more, you could add the word table. But you already know this is a table. And if you have the little logo, the logo on the front there, that's all you need. You know? So we make things so busy, it's just pathetic. The power of a ramp. I know I already said this ramp wasn't quite long enough. It should have been a 16-foot ramp because the inches is 16 inches high. For every inch of rise, you must have a foot a ramp for you that are in business. Okay, now sometimes again, that's the perfect version. But sometimes when you have an existing business, you can cheat a little bit. But that's basically where it is. But the power of a simple ramp at a threshold can make all the difference of somebody coming in or not. Reasonable accommodations. Let's keep going. Now I love this one at the bottom. And I got a thing here that I can point to, I think. Because you've got the steps there, you've got the ramp, and of course you've got the handlebars. But, uh, yeah, the handlebars. But see, if there was just enough space, then the person did it. Now, I can't be sure that that's a perfect ramp because I haven't measured that. Did I go off or something? Did something just happen? Oh, that's why it's going on. I told you I was a perfect mess, did I not? I keep proving it. That's the sad part. But anyhow, and the one at the top, this was a, a, a convention center, in fact. But what did they have? They have a lower area, so somebody with a wheelchair could use it. That's very inexpensive, especially while they were building that. To go ahead and do that. That's a real reasonable accommodation. This drinking fountains that just stick out. People with severe vision impairments are completely blind, will run right into that because it's a too high for the cave to catch it. And so there's simple solutions. Most of your fountain people have a facade that will go on, attached to the bottom and will stop and it'll meet the cane. The cane will hit that and they will hit that fountain. It's real simple, it's very inexpensive. Or go ahead and put a planter or a trash can or a bin or different things like that there that will keep them from running into it. Now a lot of people recess them even if it's brand new in their building, but you gotta be careful if you recess that you haven't done it where it's too narrow. 
But that's reasonable accommodations. You don't care about the bathroom. You don't need to. This is a restroom. I see this all the time. It's a single restroom, and yet they have a stall wall. And people can't use it. Rip out the door, rip out the stall wall, and now it's an enormous family restroom in fact. Simple solution. Sometimes the doors go in too far, so you can use double doors or you can change the swing of the door and have it come out. But it's amazing, or you can end up with a barn door that slides. Or you, having, um, can't think of the word, help me out. Pocket doors. They can work if you don't have a lot of electrical connections on that wall. But instead of that, just do the barn door. A sliding barn door. Takes up very little room. It's inexpensive, but now you can get in and out of that bathroom. And those kind, even at home, and you'll see something I've done at home in a little bit. See this counter? See the little teacher's bell that's up there at the top? Now, if you have one of those, silicone it to the counter, put it as close to the front as you can. The motel I'm staying in has a beautiful bell like that. The trouble is, they keep bringing it back to them. So they're leaving out the front where we can reach it. And the counter's just high up, and I can't reach back and get the bell. So I think I filled one shift, but they really got three shifts. But they got the bell. They're just not using it in the right position. But their intention, at least, is good. And then um, you have a nice sign, and that's just signs of assistance available, I think, or something like that, with the wheelchair number. This tells people you are available, ring the bell, and we'll be there. Because there may not even be room to lower it, and it could be extremely expensive if you're a little small business to lower that and have it in the section of the counter. Now, these are a bunch of things for doors. For the lever handle. This is really important. This is called, oh, honey, what you need. Oh, baby, you're making me feel guilty. Yes, you are. You're making me feel guilty. Come on, lay down. No, no, lay down, sweetheart. This is called a swing away hinge. And what you do is, if you've got a door that's too narrow, the door sticks out. Here's your jam, and the door sticks out here. The swing away hinge puts the door behind the jam. And it gives you a good inch and a half, sometimes two inches. And now people can get through. That's the first thing you want to try if you have a door that's too narrow, or a doorway that's too narrow. Inexpensive, and of course, I have them because the builders that built my house cheated all over the place on me. And as a wheelchair user, I couldn't get in when they were doing a lot of things. But every one of my, my bathroom, or from my bathroom now, I don't have any doors, but the guest bathroom and the bedrooms all have the swing away hinges. Okay. So they work, believe me. And the other solutions, which let's do this, five doors, especially going in the bathroom for a lot of times, just those five doors make all the difference in the world. You can get in and they don't take up all the room. Of course, the barn door that I talked about. And then here's something else. If you have to go, after I had a dog, my first service dog died. I never needed this handle. But I didn't think I was going to get another one. I was so devastated that she died. So this is the, the one that's on the left side actually goes into the guest bathroom. And see where that handle is? It's where the hinge side is. And you can just take, reach, and take it. Door closes. Businesses can do that also for their restrooms. If the door does open outward or you want them to close the door after they've used it, when they leave, they can just reach that handle. And then the other one, it's my garage door. And I just reach in and I can close the door. Now I've got her, and she opens and closes the door using the rope. But something that simple, whether it's a business or whether it's home, having that handle on the inside. And this is at City Hall. Now, I only had one problem with this. I am so used to pack off stall, you know, we're trained. I saw the button. I expected it to, the door to open. Did I read the directions? Oh my God. Don't make me read directions. I do that only when everything else fails. I'm coming up from the side, got my dog, I'm looking at the door. I just press the button. I didn't read directions. And I'm sure I pressed that door a half a dozen times. And I'm pressing it, get ready. And I'm thinking the people were dying to me. We're coming, just leave us alone, we're coming. I had no idea it was to call for assistance. <laughs> the thing that I think that should be approved upon, and again, it's not to cost much money, 
is to instead have a buzzer so that, or not a buzzer, a um, speaker. So when that thing buzzes inside, somebody can press, and you can, these things are wireless nowadays, you're talking maybe 30, 40, 50 dollars at the most, and you can go ahead and press the button and say, we're coming. So all I would have needed is to hear someone say, we're coming. Uh, when they're driven crazy, getting the dog off. I know I hit it a half a dozen times, but not more. But that's all it needs, that one little extra step, because I did not, and it, it says there, ring bell for assistance, I think something like that, and it shows the little chair, and next to that little chair is the little bell. But I'll tell you what else, most of us, when we do that, we are expecting an answer. We are expecting an answer. So we would like to still keep bringing it, waiting for somebody to answer it. Okay, but that's just a good thing. It's a beautiful bell they've done it because there's a regular push button for it. Uh, and I gotta tell you something, it is not the law to have power assist doors. It is not the law. So don't go around telling anybody it is. Now we're gonna go to the, the workforce, and I'm probably taking too long here. Because I've got it, I took a look at the clock. Just keep remembering this, you're not hiring the disability people, you're hiring the person. And if I come to your place and I'm going to jump, the first thing you find out is I've got the skills that you need. And if I don't have those skills, just because I'm using a wheelchair doesn't mean you got to hire me. But if I've got the skills, and it's not going to be hard for you to be accessible for me, you better consider me. And I may surprise you because I'll be so grateful you hired me. I'll work my tail off for you. And there's some people. I, I actually, I'm a certified personnel office company. I have my own business. I've had three offices in Kansas City. And I was placing people all over the country, from CEOs down to whatever, you know. And um, I could not get people with disabilities hired. So I, I shut the business down and I opened up a business that was temp per. So if they had them for three months, they could hire them permanently. And the thing that I would tell the employers when I would talk to them, if this person doesn't turn out, you're not stuck with them. Because that was what they were always worried about. They're saying, well, I can't fire them. But I kept telling them, if we want to take your money, we better do the job. But I had a 90% success rate. And that 10% that got fired, one guy had three different jobs. And it was because he didn't want to work. He went on the job, but oh God, he was capable. He was a good accountant. But he didn't want to work. And after the third job, I said, forget it. I'm not working with you anymore. Your disability does not give you a reason to be hired. Your quality and your skills are the reason you hire them. Not the disability that you're hiring, the person that you're hiring. And they're supported in employment. And I can't tell you how wonderful supported employment it is. Don't sneeze at it. Don't pass it up. There's wonderful people out there that can help you with that, work with you, train you as much as that individual. And when it's finally finished, if they're good workers, you will never regret the day you hired them. How many of you know who Temple Brandon is? Well, she's the, and I love her because all she went through and how the people, the farmers, were not accepting her when she was showing them how to round up the cattle. Watch the movie. If you haven't seen it, get it. Because this is what happens a lot of times. People don't listen to you. But now, she's all over the world. People use her advice. But she has autism. And another thing, I don't know, I know I've got it, no, I don't have it here. For the high school kids, I've talked to them. There's this wonderful brand new show that's out. It's on ABC. I don't know which channel that is for you. I wish I could tell you what night it's on. It's called The Good Doctor. This is a young man who's a surgeon, a skilled surgeon. But he has severe autism. And it shows how he sees things, just like Temple Brandon did. Sees things that other people do not see. And, and how he was able to do things and how the other doctors didn't want to accept it. And it just started, it's a brand new series, so it's like a second or third week now. Watch it. It'll give you the greatest understanding about autism that you could ever have. Now don't think that all people with autism have that skill level. But it is something that autism very often has a savant attachment to them, and they if they do, they see things that other people don't see. Now these are just a bunch of people. I'm just going to flick it real quick. 
Abraham Lincoln used to have terrible mental depressions, and now they're calling it bipolar. Franklin Roosevelt, they used to say it was polio, now they're almost positive it was Keon Gray. Stephen Hawkins, how many of you know who Stephen Hawkins is? Brilliant, they call him the smart, smartest man on earth right now. A physicist and everything else. He has to use that, that speaker that he's got there, and it's also a laptop. But, oh, look at him. You'd think he couldn't do anything. And he's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And then Edison and uh, Einstein both had learning, they all had learning disabilities. So, we, and Helen Keller, we know the story of her. Things that these people were able to do. And again, that doesn't mean everybody can. But if you're hiring the person, you find out if they have the skills. You just don't assume that they can't. That's the mistake we make. You don't assume they can either. They've got to make sure to show you. Now, I just had to show you this real quick. These are national companies that hire people with disabilities. All righty? <coughs> now, are you ready for this? Stand tall, because look what you've got. This is pretty exciting that all these different people in your own town are hiring people with disabilities. You should be pretty proud of that. So stand tall, but don't stop. That I have to make you laugh. Take a look at that. A porn site on the internet decided that they wanted to be accessible for people with vision impairment. And so they have descriptive porn. Now, can you believe this? I mean, I just burst out laughing when I saw this. Oh, my God, it's really so cute. What do you need? What do you need? You didn't eat at home, but I met you, and you wouldn't, so now you've got to wait till we get home. Yes, you do, sugar. So, anyway, I just wanted you to have a laugh. And at the bottom, but this is unbelievable. Listen to this. They are the 38th most popular site on the internet. So if they're willing to spend their money, they, you know they feel they're going to get a return on investment. And I, I will mention that is not on our resources page. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I trusted you. Good, that was hard to find. Okay, but I had to show you that. I just cracked it. I get all this stuff on my cell phone, you know. Now, this is important. You know, with all the news, it was news. I got the news. Oh, God, when I walk into the bathroom, I have to mess this mama mia kudakas. See that, that thing sticking out? That's from the bottom of my chair. It looks like a bolt. And basically, it's what it is. That bolt locks me in. You have something probably, yeah, there, and it really shows on yours. Okay, I should, somebody, before we need, please come, dash over here and get a picture of that bolt. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, it's more noticeable from, and we're going to do it in the back, You're so you know, you're not going to be embarrassed, but just get down there, you know how to turn it on. This, I'm sorry, people. Yeah, you know, you've got to, but you have to know, I do this every day. I'll see a curb ramp, pull the car over, and, Go and take a picture of this perfect curb ramp or a bad curb ramp. But it's so much better there than it is with my chair because it doesn't have all the junk on it. But that locks us in our car. So should we have a rollover or an accident, my chair is 400 pounds. Yours is not quite that heavy. This chair rolls on me for good. It's time for me to say hi, God. I hope you're going to let me in heaven. But, but no, look, the roof is only an inch clearance. An inch clearance, people, I have gone over curb ramps where the sidewalk's caved in, curb ramps sticking up here, I got to go over, and I end up high topping, and I can't go anywhere. You've been there, but if you have a lighter chair, sometimes you can hop it. I can't hop it. I can't hop it. And right where I'm staying, Super went to go take care of business, so I thought sometimes I'll be in the grass, but because if she does not open it, I try to pick it up. I get on my knees and I pick it up. Well, the grass went down on that spot instead of being level. And I showed Anne, no, yes, it was Anne. I showed her the white mark where I've scraped. And I had mud all over my wheels because I'm rocking back and forth. I'm trying to get the chair. Finally, I found it and I'm trying to twist it around. And the whole time, it is stuck on that piece of concrete. So, and I'll show you a few reasons why it's so important, but that's only an inch clearance. So that's why those, even the little step-ups that they have in some doors do not work. 
This is a disability charity shop, and because I make the picture a little dark and you can't really see the little step up, the step up is only about this high. When you're an able-bodied person, a pedestrian, you step over it and don't even think about it. Does this make you a bad person? Because you didn't see it. You weren't aware. You weren't aware. But that's the kind of stuff. There's the handicap. I can't get into that business. And it's a disability shop. This is a curb ramp. I can't tell you how many curb ramps are designed this way. And I just, and I have taken, because I, as I told you, I, tra I train all over the country. And I train engineers and architects and everything, and I do walkabouts. By the way, I did a walkabout yesterday. Uh, how many blocks did we go? Yeah, we, we left City Hall. Six blocks all together yeah. or so? Yeah, went down to Grand Avenue, walked up to, to uh, Fifth Street, and came back to City Hall. So, it was yeah. unbelievable. The stuff that I found was so micro bad that it, it was, what, 99% good? Yeah. Just about 99% good. I found some things that I explained to them why. And some of them wasn't so much against the law, but this is the better way to do it. And then a few things just need to be corrected. But you could be proud. Again, I'm so proud of your city to be able to take that. But that's one of the things I run into. And then the other thing is this. This is a walk, and it was a bridge to go over the highway. And I had to go out into the street, and it's a very busy section in, in Kansas City because it had shifted or sunk down, and I couldn't go across that bridge without going in with traffic. And that was had super laid out. Super. No, you can tell her, but she, she's got to stop calm down. I can't let her get by with that. I'm sorry. As a service dog, I have to lay down certain rules. And when we were at my house, or, or at, the, at the hotel, she didn't have her backpack on, and they could, they could rub house and do everything. So anyway, those, but now I'm going to show you something else here. This is Sisters over here. Y'all know Sisters? They've got that ramp going up there. And I explained that I started talking about earlier. But there I am outside. And I think it was you, Tom, that was taking the pictures. All they have to do is put a buzzer, battery operated, connected to inside. And they've got, I mean, this place, I was in there an hour hugging everybody that was in there. I mean, this is what you call a family, rescue, friends. I said, well, this is one of the healthiest place in town because people are starting their mornings out with their friends. What's healthier than that? There isn't a doctor in the world that gives you medicine that equals that. But I was hugging every one of those friends. That night, I did not sleep because my muscles were going crazy. But it was worth it because of the hugs. And Michelle mentioned why that ramp's bad for a manual wheelchair. Well, especially a manual. But even with me, it's a little bit harder. You've got the ramp going up. You're trying to pull the door open, and your chair's rolling backwards on you. With my power chair, if I stop, it stops. But still, there comes a point that you've got to make sure your chair's backing up and getting out of the way so you can pull the door open. Now, every time I stop with my power chair, I'm OK. Molly here has to be pulling the door trying to control that wheel, but this wheel still wants to go back. And how does she get in? But that little buzzer, and, and it was such a Debbie says, I'll just yell, hey, get that door. And there's enough people within that pick up and get that door that way. That's a reasonable accommodation, people. That is a, this is an existing facility. It's an existing area. So, but then what I want to show you at the same time, this door and this door have a step up, and they've done nothing to correct it. So when I want to go shopping or I don't want to do something, I'm pulling into Deb's house place, Deb and Jerry's place, but those other places aren't going to get me. OK? And the next picture is the same thing. You've got, oops, can I get it going? I don't have the battery going. That is there. It's not angry. Well, anyway, the first one's got level. The second one has a step up. And then further down, I think it's still another step up. I was in Montreal, Canada. I was doing a training for international airport directors from all over the world. And I was doing a presentation to them. Well, luckily, I got in the day before, and I had the whole afternoon and evening because of the way the planes were scheduled. And they have Old Town. And they had 18 blocks at least. And the buildings were all connected, and they were all shops. 
all shot for 18 blocks, and I only got in on one. I think I've got the picture here. There it is. See that ramp there? It was like this. Okay? It was maybe three feet long, and it went straight up like this, and when I went in to get in, I was going to pop. But it is the only shop, and I had five grandchildren I was shopping for. It's the only shop that got my business. Out of 18 blocks of shops, only one shop got my business. And even though that ramp did not meet codes, and when the people saw me, you know, they came out to make sure I was okay, and it was a power trip. You would do backwards. You could even do it. Nobody would have to back you up and get you in. The downtown is all Yeah, the old town? Yeah. And I mean, but at least I got in there. Now, that's what I mean when I keep talking about return on investment. You make the investment, you're going to get the return. But I've got to be careful here. I just want to. Uh, now, Bill Bangs was going to be here tonight. This is about the county fair. I don't know how many of you know that district, but it goes back all the way to 1991. It was Roy Schreiner's, Bill, Tom, Wayne, and Ron. Bill's the only one that's alive on that group. They were Shriners, and they went to the gentleman, Miles Johnson, of county fair, and told them their idea, and he just went to circuit. He said, absolutely, I love it, great idea. And so the first couple of years, it was just Shriners people. And then they decided, wait a minute, other people would like this. And so they just opened it up, and they advertised, newspapers wrote articles about it, and then everybody. So the first year, there was about 50 people. The next year, there was around 200, then 400, and that was 1,200 to 1,300 people. Think about that. Do you realize you could probably go through the whole United States and nobody else is doing it? And one of the reasons it's so different is they've got some rides that are free. They get all the special grants, which I'll go to the next slide. Oh, come on. Oh, that's the volunteers, wait a minute. I just want you to see that list real quick. Look at these people that do all this volunteering and accept that even the um, check wagon ride and all that, and lots of people have free tickets to see that and so forth. But it's all the free food, the free lunch, and all the things that are free. A lot of people don't even get up a day like that. You guys do. Now you can be proud of that. Now I'm hoping here. I had to wait eight. Let's see. And it was you no, know, no, it was Marty. We had to wait what five, ten minutes before we could pass the stop sign or the guys that had to stop because of all the carts. Now what was exciting about this? I was having a barrel of fun. I'm waiting and I'm waiting for every person, every cotton ticket, every driver in those carts had a smile from ear to ear. The most welcoming, loving smile. It's one thing, yeah, we're driving the car. Okay, I'm driving the car today. Oh no. The attitude was absolutely unbelievable. So I went crazy over the cars. <laughs> then, except for one or two of the barns where it needs to be proven, and Jeremy was talking about that, I could go into all of them. There's the one person pruning her, or preening her cow there for, and I think it was a cow, not a, not a steer. But anyway, um, and then I'm watching the horse uh, training and stuff that they were doing. And we also had the dog show that they were going and doing stuff. And it was so delightful. Then, of course, I always have to go to restrooms, especially at my age. But I check out restrooms all the time. I was shocked. I mean, the, the main stall, the, the um, lavatories so that you could get underneath and everything. It was just unbelievable. It's really thought out. But the only mistake that I saw is the sanitary disposal really needs to be on the side of the wall, not back there, because some people can't twist their bodies. Now that's pretty minor when you think what all they did right. But then I went crazy here. Who has a motorcycle willing to give me a ride before I go home? I want to get on the back of the motorcycle on a ride. Okay, when I was real young, my husband and I were going to buy a motorcycle and we had one of these Harley Davidsons, the old ones that had the suicide clutch. My husband was afraid of it. I was out there driving it. We didn't buy it because he was afraid of it. Oh, I love motorcycles. And I can't get anybody to give me a ride. But the reason I wanted to show this, in the high school, when I was at the high school, they had a special spot where all the motorcycles parked. And I have seen motorcycles not go over on purpose because they've taken a regular car parking space. I've seen someone actually take a hammer, not a hammer, but like a 
baseball bat, whatever, and deliberately knock out the lights on a motorcycle and things like that because they don't understand motorcycles gotta have a place to park. So what do they do? But more and more businesses, and this is not a disability issue, when you have a parking lot, have a section for motorcycles. And when I saw that there, even though it was a disability section, those motorcycles were all lined up behind that fence, and cars couldn't be parked in there anyway. It was so perfect. It, I think what I'm so thrilled about with all of you is the planning that you put into a lot of things that you do, and that was a perfect example. Okay, Nathan, where are you? It's time to go. People are tired of listening to me. Of course, I only gave them like 30 seconds. Okay, time's up. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you can get up on the stage. Oh, I'm good. I'll just stand right here. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell them what you do and don't do. All right, so my name's Nathan Prisbaum. I'm the executive director at the YMCA. Um, most of you probably know. Some of you know who I am. Some of you don't. Um, so I've actually been here at Spencer now for four years uh, at the YMCA in this current position. And in that time, I think that we've done quite a few things that have really been exciting for our YMCA and exciting, not along with just the facility-wise. That's, that's been done even before I've been here, but we're very conscious of that. We do a lot of partnerships with the schools, with the people in the community to provide um, the wider place for people to be. Um, but that's the one important thing is that we're a community center. And YMCA is all about bringing everybody together and bringing people together to have that joy in their life, whatever it is. If that's going to the pool, if that's going in the gym and just hanging out, if that's just being there to, you know, have something to do for the day. That's that's really what the is all about. We're not just a workout facility, everybody. And, and that's one thing that I usually like to encourage all the time. It's not all about exercise. You know, you know, mental health is huge. It's important. Um, and whatever that is that makes you happy, that's what we want to provide at the YMCA. The Y does, for those kind of people, what Sisters does for the people that go in there for breakfast in the morning. That's correct. The Y has a breakfast in the morning and it's coming in and they are going to join each other. Thanks for reminding me of that. Okay. When you said that, I thought that same thing. We definitely have a group of people that come in every single day at a certain time. If that's they're going to the pool, if that's they're going to a fitness class, whatever it is, they're there for the camaraderie and for the people. And just to for the enjoyment. Right, Rosie? <laughs> Rosie's always there. We always right. see Rosie. Now yes. you also hire people, right, with disabilities? That's correct. We actually have three staff members right now. Um, that we we have hired. Great. Tom, Terry, and Chelsea. Chelsea. I knew it was Chelsea. I knew it was <laughs> okay. Chelsea works in our child care department. She helps out in the child care. Tom is our one of our um, helps in our maintenance and cleaning department, and so does Terry. Wonderful staff. Um, Tom has been with us for over, and Allie, I said, what, over th almost three years now. Um, and Terry's been through about all close to that, maybe two, and Chelsea's been about two years too. Um, we love them. We love having staff there and hard, hard working staff. And no complaints at all. Everybody, everybody, everything that they, they do, everything that they're, they're a part of has been great. So, and they're required to do what they're supposed to do. Definitely. Doing it. Exactly. I, right. Yeah. No, yeah. It's not the disability. And, and, I, and I, think, I think the good thing that you can tell is there's a story. I, I'm going to tell a story. I was just telling. Allie about the story, because Allie is actually Tom partially helps out and supervises the Great. board. Um, I, Tom, I know Tom pretty well. We, I hired Tom, and then we, I kind of showed him the ropes and stuff like that, and, and I know that Tom sometimes is very good at finding a way to manipulate somebody. <laughs> I love it. And so, you know, I kind of called him out on it a little bit, and it wasn't anything that I was being mean or anything like that, but Tom just knows he knows what to do. He's, like I said, three years, you know the process that we have. We, we've set it up very well for Tom where he can come in, he has a checklist, gets it done and so forth, but you know, that kind of stuff happens. So once Tom found out that I had come and said, no, you know what you're doing, he knew exactly what he 
you just feel like he did. No, he, he, he's, he's playing all games. And that's okay. It's fine. So, yes, it's just like everybody else. And you said to him and said, you've got to do it. you got to do it. Job done. Yeah. All right. That's what we're talking about. You're hiring the person. And if I don't want to do the job, get rid of me. Or at least sit down and talk to me and remind me, uh uh, we're, you know, this is a job. You're responsible. That's correct. Great. So, three and very successful. Ready very to hire successful. more? If we have the possibility to, but right now we don't. Yeah, you're filled up. Great. There's Give him a hand, hand, please. <laughs> Okay, Jeremy, is Jeremy here? Yeah. Hey, I told you. Oh, there he is, hiding from me. That was boring. Oh, Jeremy, oh, you're No, You were hiding over there. I just I saw you, but I can't see you. Oh, I like the one I'm getting at the other. You ever seen me on the streets driving? She's still there, isn't she? Uh, where are you? Oh, wait a minute. All right. Yeah. See? I am a perfect mess. I keep proving it to you all. I, uh, I, you know, uh, in, in my position, when I, I think Tom talked to me first about uh, the Spencer ADA Council was bringing an expert, was bringing an expert to Spencer. Uh, that that was exciting. And then, and then when I heard Michelle wanted to come to the fair for the day, that's exciting and I'll be honest, somewhat terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because I am sure over 200 acres, something is not right. So, uh, but after the visit, um, I, I think um, Michelle may come to work for us as one of our PR people uh, because she she and had a great experience at the fair. And, and I think exactly what Nathan just talked about, the fair is all about bringing people together. And we're well aware when we bring 300,000 people to Spencer for nine days, um, they're coming from all aspects of life. Uh, and, and so part of our job is to make sure that we are accommodating uh, all of our fair guests to have, to have the same fair experience that everybody else has. So <clears throat> we're doing that uh, really through several, several means. Uh, of course, Disability Awareness Day was just talked about. And actually, we had a meeting yesterday where we realized that probably Disability Awareness Day might be somewhat misnamed. It, it is a great program, obviously, as, as Michelle showed on the slide, about 1,200 people participate every year uh, in, in our day. And if you're not familiar with that day, how that works is there's an invitation that's sent out to various groups uh, throughout the upper Midwest. Uh, might be schools, uh, might be various organizations that are assisting disabled people, and they're invited to be our guests at the fair. Uh, they have the opportunity to ride carnival rides in the morning, uh, and the, the carnival works very uh, hard to make sure those, those individuals are accommodated so they can enjoy the fair. We, we provide a lunch. Uh, there's the ability to do, um, the ability to do uh, auto races or whatever the evening entertainment is. So we're excited to offer that, but what we discovered yesterday is the name of the day is Disability Awareness Day, and we don't, we're not doing a lot to make people aware of the abilities uh, that people might have. So one component, we actually talked some, somehow next year, some of the things you did tonight, uh, incorporating that into the fair uh, so that when people come to the fair, they can, they can maybe experience, uh, obviously, you know, some of the try on, I think try on the ability is, or is what uh, Tom mentioned earlier. So that's an aspect uh, we're gonna look to. Uh, the other thing too that I think we have to do for us on the fairgrounds in the next year uh, is continue accessibility issues in terms of paving and getting in and out of, of buildings. Um, I was very excited to hear Michelle yesterday talk about the fact that for the most part, very few problems. Uh, and as we continue to renovate restrooms, uh, the importance of family restrooms and all those types of things are things that we're, we're working on. But we understand that's a challenge, but it, it has been good to get some feedback. And I'll say the Spencer ADA Council has been very helpful I remember when I first got, I wasn't in town very long, I think before Rosie sat me down and uh, <laughs> gave me my marching orders. And uh, so, and so we, we try to do that because that, that really is what we're about. So, you know, every person should be able to come, much like whether it's sisters downtown or at the Y or at the fair, every person should be able to come and enjoy their experience. So uh, there are some things we need to do better. I Jeremy, do you hire people with disabilities? We do, we do, of course. Uh, Fair time, you know, we're looking at almost 500 employees get hired for that nine-day stretch, and in a, in a wide variety. And, and those accommodations, uh, for some, might involve uh, if it's a job.
job that involves standing. It might be ability to, to sit while they do that job. Um, there, there's a wide range of accommodations if we have to, but as always, it's about the ability, um, the ability to do a job. I, I think of, um, I, I think of an individual we had this year uh, that was treated like any employee, and he didn't do his job and and was was sent home. Um, so you know that 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 happens. Um, yeah. That one wasn't mine. <laughs> so, so that it, you know, and, and um, but that comes with obviously. I think you, you've hit on a lot tonight. It's all about people. I mean, and, and people are people, and and we've had to do some training. Um, just because a disabled person might come up into the office and demand a whole list of things, that doesn't mean they're going to get them because they're just a grouchy mean person. <laughs> Uh, you know, no difference. So th those are some things though, that, that we also work pretty hard on, them, you know, to make sure that uh, we're doing what we need to do to be accommodating, but that that doesn't uh, that doesn't allow you to walk over. And I want to say something because you brought this up, Jeremy. I uh, use the expression: if a post quantum works, they can't demand the camera. And I really mean that. They will come in, and you've got the perfect solution. It's inexpensive, but it works and it's safe. And they would simply say, well, I want this. Excuse me, and you don't get it. So that's just, again, it's reasonable accommodations. And if somebody's sitting there and trying to pull the wool over your eyes, check with folk rehab, check with the people over there at the Hope Haven, check with people that work with this all the time and know the law and can help guide you. Because reasonable means reasonable. I'm glad you brought that up on the list because there are people out there that are so demanding. I'm telling you, <laughs> oh, they made me look nice. Thank, thank Go you. ahead. Well, just, just, I'll just end really with this. You know, the interesting thing we that's kind of tied to this is uh, it is amazing to me, especially when people are dealing with grandstand concert tickets. The the number of knee and hip replacements that happened in Northwest Iowa approximately uh, one week before the absolutely <laughs> 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 really amazing. I, 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 you know, I, yeah, those guys do great work that first week in September. Everybody gets a knee because they all need lower seats. So anyway. I love it. I didn't hear that. Didn't hear that. <laughs> He's talking reality. Now. Okay, the next person. Are we ready as Lois, if I'm correct? Yep. Okay, Lois is gonna to talk to you about some of the benefits of hiring people with disabilities, <laughs> et cetera. Well, yeah, and that's... And maybe some other things. So thank you for being here. Yeah, I think that's, that's one of the points we want to bring up is that um, Michelle is all about simple, practical uh, solutions to, to accessibility. Uh, but we want to make you aware that if you do decide to spend some dollars on a major investment, there are some tax things out there that uh, are available to you. And uh, Lois is going to tell you, yes, you might have to spend some money, but there are some, some, some breaks you can get on. And Lois explains things very well in, in a layman's terms. Uh, uh, I, I direct the fire at Price the King, and Lois is my accompanist. And uh, I just look at her and she knows what to do. So yeah, she, she, she can handle a piano keyboard and she also handle figures very well. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of those you have to do well, Is everything correct up there, Lois? Yeah. Check me out because I could type something in wrong. Okay. That's good. I, I know tax law can be something Lois, hold it closer to your mouth. Okay. Uh, you, okay. I guess I'm going to keep this. Um, I know the tax law can be very snooze worthy, so I vowed here to be very simple and you know just stick with the basics. And, um, but in some regards, I have to hear some of the details. So there is a tax credit that if you do spend money on uh, these improvements, and the most common things that we see this for are ramps. She mentioned the most of these. Uh, uh, door, door widening <coughs> or smoothing the uh, the. Uh, yeah, when you retrofit and improve the physical. <coughs> yes. So doors, doors are common. The ramps are common. Ramps. The smoothing of your approaches. You know, you come exactly. in and you can't get your wheelchair. Accessible restrooms. And sometimes parking lot modifications so that you've got the, the areas. All those would be expenditures that would be eligible for the credit. The most common things that we would see. Um, it can only offset tax. So you have to, if you're in a business and you're paying taxes, 
taxes, then this credit would, could reduce that tax. I know that sounds kind of funny, so we think, well, we all pay taxes, but there are there are other credits that even if you don't have a tax owed, you may receive some dollars back. So this is one of those credits that's only eligible for offsetting actual tax. It's called the general business credit. And the reason I bring that up is it's not something if you make these adjustments to your home that you're eligible for. It's for small businesses, and that would be a partnership or S corporation or a, a Schedule C, Schedule F. Those things should sound familiar to you in your tax world. Um, but it's a business credit, not just something to do if you make these adjustments in your house. Um, it's for businesses that have the buildings. The adjustments have been for a, a property that was placed in service before 1990. And the reason for that, something Michelle mentioned, the American Disabilities uh, Act was came into play in 1990. And at that time, it's now law that, you, that if you're building new, the facility has to be made accessible. So this is a situation where you have an older facility and you're doing something to upgrade, then you can, you're eligible to have this credit to help with expenditures. The amount of this credit is 50% of expenditures between $250 and $10,250. So really strange um, numbers they put on each end, but the point is, if it's just a really inexpensive thing, less than $250, and it's not going to be eligible for a credit. But if they also only have a cap on the other end, of, of maximum credit can be $5,000 then. Then how do you claim this? There's Everybody's familiar with tax forms galore. It's another one of those, uh, form 8826. And it's not important to remember those details. It's more <coughs> important for all of you just to remember, hey, I, I, I remember hearing if we did we were thinking of doing a ramp, there, there might be a tax credit. And then what do you do is you, you talk to your, your tax preparer or you work with your own taxes and you do this, there's software, there's usually a, you know, a search mechanism with all those programs, lots of good things available there. Or you, know, you can certainly contact me, I'm happy to answer anybody's questions or get any information to people or others at Winter State. So plenty of people in the area, there's lots of good tax preparers and other firms around the area as well. My advice on that is using software because this is one of those credits where in the old days when you do something on a tax form, you fill out this form, but now it has to go to another form and then more limits come into play and then it goes to another form. It's just, it's really complicated. So my advice there is using tax software, not trying to do this by yourself on, on paper. And the only other thing to know is there's no double dipping. So if you, if you have spent the $10,000 and you get a $5,000 credit, that $10,000 is not eligible as an expense on your taxes um, because you, your credit is giving you the same benefit. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I think the most important thing though is have proof, have your documentation. Don't just say, oh, I spent this. It's like everything else. You have your proof. True with all that. Is that it? Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. I will mention that um, Lois isn't able to stay with us yet tonight, but uh, her information is available on, on brochures and everything. So yeah, please, uh, you can get a, get a hold of Lois and Winter State or, or like she said, if you're busy with your tax preparer, your CPA, anything like that. So okay, get it, Michelle. Now, we have BR, are you ready, Molly? Now let me get out to you. You don't have a, oh yeah, you're gonna get back to Molly. Okay, let me back out of your way. Um, I'm Molly Hiddings and I work with Iowa Vocational Rehabilitation Services. Um, I'm not primarily here in Spencer, but I do um, work in the high school here. Um, and then Gerald Brasky is responsible for the Clay County area, the Houston area. But some things that we can do, um, like for me was talking about, like I said, I'm not from Spencer, um, but um, reasonable accommodations, we can help with that. Um, we can kind of go in to a business and see what type of reasonable accommodation that a person might need. Like, for example, like when I was in high school, I worked at a pizza place and all I needed was a stool to sit on to be able to reach the cash register, those types of things. Those are reasonable accommodations. I didn't need a fancy wheelchair like Michelle has. 
to sustain myself up. But that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I'm sure. Um, it does. <laughs> I have a gold block. <laughs> anyway, um, other things that we can do, and we do, like, we, we pair a lot with um, Hope Haven and Allie and Tony and then Erin as well. She's going to talk to me. And um, we do a lot of job shadows with businesses, which is really awesome and helpful for students so that they can understand what the job actually means and what all the job functions are. Because um, someone, even though they have a disability, they need to be able to do all the job functions of the job. So um, they can be accommodated, but um, we can do that as well. Um, personally, I love to learn about businesses and what they have to offer. Um, and especially, I like to learn about what the business does. Um, being from a small town, Armstrong, Princeton, I, uh, you know, you're not really, there's not a school of businesses over there. So it's kind of fun to just learn about a business and seeing what your needs are as well. Um, tax incentives, which Lois talked about, so that was awesome. Um, we can also work with like post hire. Like if if we have somebody come in and they um, get the job, um, we can help with services after they get the job as well. Even when their file is closed, we can reopen it. So. Most importantly, just use this as a resource for seeing if a business is um, accessible. Um, funny little joke here, and I were talking about earlier was if I can't get your business, I guess I'm not gonna be able to do it. But, <laughs> but I think, um, you know, we can always have somebody like my supervisor or something come in and do it as well. But, um, like I said before, too, it's um, the most important thing that I love to do is just to get students and adults into business what they, they have and, um, and what their expectations are of the job. So, that I'm great. great. And the thing to realize, if I used to be on the state board in, in the state of Missouri. In fact, I was the chairperson for a while and everything else. And the thing that I keep remembering is they become a team for you. They're not in there to dictate to you. They're not in there to demand. They're there to assist and help and bring you resources that you may not know about. So don't be afraid. Oh, they're going to be good with that. No, they're there to help. Not just a person with a disability, but you also. So you, the whole idea is win-win, not win-lose. It's for all sides to win in the end. And one more thing is that a new thing that we've kind of been doing as well is doing presentations to businesses about, um, like, with their employees about disabilities. A lot of times, like, I'm going to talk to Ivan Lakes on Friday to do their with employees, and I'm going to talk about like easy disabilities ones that you can't see. Obviously, you can see that I have one. So, um, but some of those mental health or learning disabilities that are unable to detect, you can kind of help with those types of things too. So, and I love to talk. So. <laughs> and uh, Gerald, who was your early yep, Gerald. Yep. So here's Aaron. Oh. Yeah, we work with. With workforce. Got that there for you. All right. Okay, well, just quickly, I'm Erin Tingle from Iowa Workforce Development, and you know, a lot of familiar faces around here. I work very closely with a lot of different entities here in the room. Um, I quickly have to just tell you that um, I do know that people work at the YMCA because they love the people there, because I worked there for a very long time on minimum wage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I loved it. Okay. And uh, the fair also, we refer people out to the fair. I know that a lot of workers um, came through Iowa Workforce Development and were referred out to the fair. Also worked very closely with Thomas. And I know that he works at night because he doesn't like people. <laughs> <laughs> so good accommodations. Anyway, as a disability resource coordinator, uh, we're closely with people here in our community to help them find employment where needed. We have 11 counties. and. Um, most recently, and why I'm talking here today is because I work very closely with Iowa Vocation Rehab recently to be on the Iowa Disability Access Committee. Um, so that was very interesting because we're working on access right. to buildings. Uh, first time I ever worked with that, and it was very eye-opening. It, it was like Voc Rehab has that available to any business that would need that. But one thing I do have to quickly add because everybody said everything is. Um, you don't realize all the little things and you know the wide variety of disabilities that could potentially come into your business. Um, anywhere from signage and braille 
to uh, the, you know, how the bathrooms are set up. And I did talk to one of my supervisors about the fact that the tampon machine was not in the right place, and he informed me that there hadn't been tampons in there for 25 years. <laughs> Bottom of my three now, and, was, and then some still provided any good. It wasn't going to do any good. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. But take it all. Yeah, we have to take it all. Yeah, take it down now. <laughs> So anyway, I did bring information. I want to bore everybody with. If you're an employer, you want more information about tax credits for employers uh, for hiring people with disabilities. I do have information here. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. These people have done a wonderful work. Let me tell you. Accessible business increases business, but accessible business also increased where they employed. You, you, if your accessible business is accessible. Now you can get even more employees than you thought. And I love that logo down there. We are all able to do anything. And I keep reminding you because there's people, some can't, or some won't. So just don't say, well, disabled. I'm not going to be that again. Where people, you hire bad people that are quote unquote normal. I hate that word. I would never want to be normal. Oh, boring that would be. But you just keep thinking about that. Just Move out the spot table. Look at all the other people that have been bad and been fired. Just have to get a person with disabilities if you deserve a job like that. No problem. And I was so happy when Nathan talked about having to talk to somebody about it. Okay, we're going to start. This is me. I just want to show you. I really do lean. The only time when I'm skydiving there, I was only on crutches then. But all these other things, I'm in wheelchairs. I was doing a wheelchair survey at Park. And I said, I don't want to have time to fish. So I did some fishing and I had to call one. And this beautiful Tennessee walking marsh, which we had to go through getting me on it. Because this wasn't one of those places where they got everything ready. It was fun getting me on. That is a real race car. So the door is sealed shut. And it took three men to help me crawl into that race car. Three men to get me back out. That's great attention from the men. And the women were all watching. And then over here, this pueblo, I've got to tell you the story. This is the Santa Clara Pueblo in Santa Fe. Now you have to understand, Pueblos are like the top of a mountain. And we think of mountains going and pointed. Many of them aren't. And it was so funny, once you got on the top, they were pointing over now. There's this Pueblo. They were enemies of us. And this Pueblo over here, we were friends, even though we were a different group, etc. And they couldn't get me in the bus, because it wasn't accessible, to go up to the top. Because the visiting area was below. And I said, would you allow me in my Tahoe and Molly, that was suburban now, but that's the same thing that my Tahoe did, to follow you up this guy over the hill and everything else. I thought, the bus can do it, I can do it. So I get to the top, and that's my beautiful Bishla, by the way, that I used to have. And she died of cancer. And that's my cousin and her daughter that were helping me on this trip, and those are the guys on either side that were the, help me out, Narrators, I guess I'll use the word the guides. That's the word I'm thinking of. So we're going, going all over this pueblo, learning everything. It was so interesting. Oh my God, if you ever get there, take take the visit. It's worth it. But the chief is shooting all these pictures, and his children and were just having a terrible time with me, his girls, and um, just kept shooting pictures. And, and so many of them were on reading. And finally, I said to his daughters, "Why is he taking all these pictures?" And he said. You're going to be famous. So he won't tell me I have to talk to you. So he comes over and he tells me, you are so inspirational. And I'm just dying when he says that. And he says, I'm going to be putting you, now he was the chief of this tribe. And he says, you're going to be in our national newspaper. And I'm taking all these pictures and they go, well, you're the first person in a wheelchair that has ever been a uh, problem. And just because I was going to drive my home, and I looked at him and I said, chief, I'm not great or courageous. I'm nosy. And I'm not going to have my cousins come up here and see all this, and I'd be at the bottom and miss it. I said, that's nothing courageous. But that's what happens. You know, and again, we, we, we misrepresent people, but I can get up and I live and I have a terrible time. Okay, now, this is where you can go to the thing. But you guys know the ADA console and all that. But if you want copies of what happened tonight or of my PowerPoint, even we've got them. Okay, I go fast. Here's a bunch of resources that I went in there and put in there, and I, I've got some of those different things. 
But they've already talked to you, and they're, they're in the phone book. You know how to get a hold of them. Um, this is so important. Don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. And I'm making this fast. And the perfect example is Deborah and Jerry's sisters. For them to try to make that ramp accessible, they'd have to encroach on the actual city sidewalk and everything else, and it would become a nightmare. So instead, they're using the buzzer. So don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. It's really important to just pull back a little bit and simplify whatever you can. I know I'm fine. Okay, and this is just, you know, what you always do what you've always done, what's going to happen? You're going to always get what you've always got. I mean, people forget that, you know, change your attitude. And Dr. Seuss, I love that expression from him. Because if you don't care, who's going to? We need somebody to care. And Spencer cares. Now, is this, okay, we want to make sure I'm just going to make this fast. These are all the people that have sponsored, helped sponsor this whole week that I'm here. Okay, and they deserve a lot of credit. Again, this, this, this city is unbelievable. Now, if you have questions, feel free. Because what comes out is spring water. I hope it's in my mind. But maybe I didn't say it too clear. Does anybody have questions? And if you don't, that's fine, but just in case. See, I was clear. My spring water works. <laughs> Every once in a while, I make a mistake to do something right. I'm going to go fast because nobody raised their hand. Now, I've, we've been passing out my card. I am really serious. If you've got questions and you don't ask, it's your problem. I have questions. Yes. I'm usually up here, so I can't see anything on the screen. Is there a place online that I can look at some of these pictures that I can follow my computer? Not all of these, but what you can do is you can get this, the, they will email this whole thing to you. See, and you, that's why I wanted that done. We didn't want to pass out paper and then people just leave it all there. Again, we don't want to keep killing the trees more than we have to. But you'll get that and then you can enlarge it on your screen and everything else. And to see that because you are legally blind, correct? I have a cousin the same way, he's a farmer, and you ought to see what he does. Legally blind. <laughs> so anyway, and so this I just I want you to laugh. Enjoy this. Just enjoy it. What it says, did you see it, Judy? It says, if, 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 by the way, if you're not feeling good and people don't love you and you wonder what's going on, you ought to ask your questions. This very homely looking buzzard says, am I too sexy? <laughs> and I love it, so I have to use it. Okay, now, are we ready? Magic trick. Okay, let's get it over here. I need a couple of my ADA council core group. I'm only got a muscle because I've been talking forever. These people thought they'd be old by now. Make sure. Do I have the right one? Am I doing this the way that people would? I may be doing this wrong. I'm being a bad girl. Okay. Okay. We've got scarves. They're going to pull out a scarf. Hold on to it. Pull out a scarf. Where's the person I grew? Nobody's up here. Okay. Come on, Eric. Eric gets one, and I got one more. What is Stevie doing over there, writing love to yeah. um, okay. And stop taking pictures. Get somebody else to take pictures. See how bossy I am? I told you I wasn't nice. Somebody over here will take pictures. Molly will take pictures, won't she? Great. Now, we just want you to see. Thank you, Molly. OK, put your hand through there. See? Oh it's empty. There's nothing in there. Okay, now we gotta set this up again. Yeah. Now you're gonna see two for work. Let's just put you go ahead and drop one over here. Get close enough that you can pick it up. Can you pick that up for mom? Pick that up. Bring it up here to me. Good girl. This is blue. And and I use the different colors to describe different things. Blue is for those times that just ain't going well for you. You're sort of having a bad day. You just want to go back to bed and forget about it. But that's okay. Sometimes accept those days. You know there's a light at the end of the road. And blue doesn't always have to be blue. Okay, let's go over here with that one. Go ahead, pick it up. Bring your mom up. Okay, yellow is the sunshine days. Everything goes right. Life is good. You've been to sisters with all your friends that morning, or you've been to Y with all your friends, and you go leave and say, gosh, that was great. So that's how I let yell. Okay? Okay, go ahead and get that. Green.
freeze the day that you've been really working for something. You've been trying hard. Maybe it's to hire somebody and you found the right person. Okay? Or maybe you've been on a project and finally it's finished and you can say, oh, that one's over with. I don't have to worry anymore. And then we've got the red. Okay, go ahead over here, Super. Over there. Bring it up. Bring it to me. Good. You're on the red is the day that everything's gone wrong and you want to, if anybody can come near you, just keep in control. Yell, scream, and holler in your bedroom. I do double pillows when I do. But I start screaming and saying, Where did you have So we got those days too. Now. Hold on. She, she deserves something for doing this. So she's been so good. I'm just going to give her a bunch of treats. A lot of times she doesn't get treats. We're going to take time to do that, aren't we, sweetheart? You've been so good, so patient. Normally we don't do these things at night. All right. Normally she's used to us doing it day. Now we're going to be at home relaxing and taking it easy. Meanwhile, what's happening is, what life is all about <laughs> is this. Life consists of all these different things. And if you just keep remembering, you get through one phase, you get through the next phase. The bad phase is we'll end up with the good phase. I love you all. I thank you for being here. We've got one, I have one more slide. Hold on here. What did I do with it? It's around my neck. See? I hate myself with this fine drudge I'll have it. Let's see. There's our whole group again. We got Eric in there. Thank heavens. Because he actually doesn't live in Spencer anymore. I didn't have a picture of him. And thanks to Anne, I did have a picture and didn't know it. She saw it. So this, you have to see that. I got the message. Can you believe I'm gonna shut up? No. That's it. Thank you.